that is the uh, Techachas, um, the warnings of God to the Jewish people if they don't follow the commandments. So, curses that the God gives the Jewish nation. So, uh, if they don't follow the uh, Torah. So, let's uh, do this as uh, quickly as we can. We are holding and still a portion of a uh, of, um, of uh, uh, we are holding on chapter. We I went we went yesterday into the portion of the Fukotai, and we are holding on chapter twenty six, verse number, verse number ten. You'll eat the old produce, and the Yashmir Chodesh Tetzi. You'll clear out the old before the new. As she says, I paid us that what the blessing that uh, the blessing is that the old food meaning that means, however, that the produce will remain well preserved. You know, the fruit will not go to those days that had no refrigeration. So uh, the food will not go to rot and mellow in age, so that the old produce from the three years ago will be better than the uh, than the, than that of last year. Because the promise is that sometimes that you'll have to eat food from three years ago. Yashme Khadish Tasi. That means the threshold floor will be full of new grain, grain which could decay and left there and therefore must be stored. The storehouse that will be filled with the abundant of old produce. It's going to be such an abundance of food. You're going to have a problem. What to do with the old food and new food? You're going to have such an abundance. I'll, put my place, I'll place my dwelling place between you. They seek all nafshias and my spirit will not reject you. That's your what does that mean? The temple self understood. They seek all nafshi. After my spirit will not be disgusted with you, every expression of a goal, givila, is an expression of purging, of something which absorbs by something else. As the verse says, we know in the word in Allah terminology, agola, agola when the when the when the, the vessel uh, is purged from its what it has what it has within it, it's called agola. But there's a shield, the mighty nigal is rejected. He did not accept the ointment. The warriors used to anoint the leather shields with a uh, coated with fat in order to have the uh, attacking arrows be speared, glided off of it, rather than pierce the leather. So push the, 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 the fats. The oil would make sure it would, would keep the, the leather, that the leather would have come like, so to say, impaired, and that it was not, couldn't go within. It would throw it away, throw away the spirit. Slapped him and said, Come on, shall go with you, you, Vaisa Lechem, and the I'll beat you as a god. And you to be to me as a nation. The God promises the blessing of the spiritual quality, involving intimate knowledge of Him. I will stroll with you in the Garden of Eden, as a, as a, if I were one with you, and you will be noticed, not terrified of me. Now, all my things that you will fear me under such filmy circumstances, the Torah tells us, and you are our God. We're going to have a very personal relationship. Between us and our Kodesh Baruch Hu. Ani Hashem Alekei Chamayin God of Yigad Hashem Tisayel Samaret Tzai, we took you out of the land of Egypt. We asked Lahem Avodim for you were slaves there. Ve'esh be'mertis Alechem, I broke the pegs of your yoke. Ve'elach Eslem Kevimiyas, and you will travel upright. As she says, Ani Hashem Alekei Chem, Kedai Shetamin will be. It is worthwhile for you to believe in me. Uh, for I can do all these things. For indeed, I took you out of the land of Egypt, and I performed great miracles for you. Moites, Moites is like a plowing yoke consists of a bar that's placed over the animal's neck, and the reins that are placed under its neck and threaded through two holes at the end of each bar. This term moit is returned to as a peg, which inserted into the two holes at the end of the yoke. These pegs therefore are called the reins tightly through the hole, preventing the reins from coming off the axe of the head, preventing the undoing of the knot. So they have these pegs that they'll put into the holes of those, of the yoke of the animal. Kaimimimus means with an erected stature, you'll stand right up, you'll stand strong. Lay how the tail goes into the Exalchachas, which in the synagogue we read quietly here. If you're not going to listen to me, you'll not perform these commandments. As he says, the toil in the study of Torah, in order to know the, the exposition of the sages corresponding to verse 3, 
I might think that this refers to fulfillment of mitzvahs. Scripture says that you perform the commandments. Uh, we understand what means really stated. So what is the meaning of you will not listen to me? To toil in the study of Torah. And the last in the beginning of the Torah. What is the meaning to me? Speaking about someone who knows his master and willfully rebels against him. We're talking about a person like in the, in the Torah terminology called Apocalypse, somebody who knows his master and knows God and decides to go against him. Likewise, regarding Nimrod, Torah says, a powerful hunter before the Lord. It means that he recognized God and intentionally rebelled against him. Likewise, regarding the people is doing, which says very sinful and sinful and sinful against the Lord it means that they recognize their master. Not talking about a bunch of people who have no idea what's going on. Talking, that's why this world is not like Stoyim and Gemara, because the world of Stoyim and Gemara were knowledgeable people. Today, we're living in a world of ignorance. People have no idea what is true, what's not true, what is right, and what's wrong. So it's not the same situation. And people should not compare it to Stoyim and Gemara. Uh, and that's a very important thing that, that you, I know I hear people compare it, and it's not comparable because, as Rashi says, Stoyim and Gemara were people who knew God, they had a knowledge in God, and went against God. And therefore, it was a terrible situation which God brought upon a terrible catastrophe. Today, generation in the world is totally ignorant of God. They have no knowledge in God. They have no comprehension. They have no idea what it's all about. And therefore, that's why if they, if they do things that are not right, it's not out of, out of rebellion to God. They're not there to say, oh, I know what God wants, and, uh, and I'm going to go against them. Uh, just into the desires of their own desires, and, uh, and they, have, uh, they don't care, uh, they, they're, they're into the size, they don't know God. It's not, it's not, the God is not on their radar. And uh, that's with the situation. So it's a total ignorance. And they talk, even Jews that go against God is a total ignorance. They have no knowledge, in time. they never learned to and they have no idea about it. But like Sasu, so that says you have not learned the Tata, the self understood. All this comes about for not learning. And if you, if you don't learn Taylor, what do you expect from people to go and do things that are against Taylor? You have no idea that Taylor says it's prohibited. If you despise my statutes, and you reject my ordinances, it's like Tigal, you're disgusted in, in God's ordinance. The Viltia says, come to my side to break all my commandments, to break my covenant. And now she said, this is first to despise others who perform the commandments. Not that you hate it, you hate others. You hate the saviors. The vilti says, you prevent others from doing the tables. Again, the person that knows what the day says, you know, I don't want to do it, and nobody else should do it. So Mitzvah Hashem refers to one who denies that I, God, commanded that. This is why the verse states, and, and, it, and uh, my commandments, and not any of the commandments, my commandments. Then, this is the first one that denies the main tenets of Judaism, namely that God is the other present creator of all existence. Hence, this verse is enumerated as seven sins, the first leading to the second, and so on until the seventh, and proceeds to denigration as follows. First, the person does not learn Torah. That's the beginning of everything. We've stopped learning. Then he subsequently does not fulfill the commandments. He hasn't learned. How is he supposed to fulfill any commandments? Then he despises others who fill the commandments. Then he hates the sages. Then he prevents others from filling the commandments. He denies and desists and of the tenses of the, of the commandments. And finally, forget about the authenticity of the commandments. He prays for me, he denies in God. So everything starts with seven steps downwards, and everything starts from the lack of learning. Exactly what you do to me, I will do to you. I will order upon you shock. Fever, consumption, fever. Disease that causes hopeless longing and depression. Give us nefesh. I'll give you depression. 
you'll you'll sow your seed in vain, and your enemies will eat. As she says, I've got the Alecha Mitzvisa. I'll put a pot, I'll command it up in you. This is these that comes in the flesh, blisters, affliction upon which you have been swelling, whose swelling have been abated, thereby causing the sad appearance to the other space. Hadachas is a, is an illness that makes the body feverish. Achleisenayim means the eyes in Nayim look on and uh, with anticipation, longing to see the illness will abate. And, and you will recover, but eventually does not recover. Depression falls upon the family members when he dies. Any desires that have been not realized or prolonged yearning for something is turned to loyan enayim. So that's a depression. Oh, what's going on with me? And you will sow and it will not grow. And if it does grow, your enemies will eat it. Verse 17, I'll put my face, my attention to you, but you'll be spit before your enemies. They, your enemies will rule over you. Your enemies will rule over you, and you will flee, and you'll turn around. You'll see nobody's running after you. Ash says, I'll put my, my face in you, my leisure. That's God is saying, I'll turn my way from my affairs and heart to harm you. This expression is understood literally, namely, they will rule over you. Now, the uh, God explanation of the passages, beginning from 16, as taught in Teres Kainim, is as follows. I will speak only out of wrath. Like, it looks like you went with me in wrath. You're wrath with me, I'll be wrath with you. That's called Midah Kenegh and Midah. If God tells him, the plagues will address you only immediately after the other. The first plague will be not having finished, when well, you'll bring the next plague upon you. And then the next one. Bahala means a plague of shock, shock people. What is this? A plague which cure is anxiously awaited. And when afflicted dies suddenly, people are in shock. Sometimes a person is sick and lies in bed, but his flesh is well preserved on him. Therefore, the title says shachefes, the disease that consumes the flesh. Or occasionally a person may be worn out from the disease, but is comfortable and is not burning fever. Therefore, the Torah states that the Kadachas, the teach that the afflicted will be burned with fever. Sometimes a person may be burning with fever, he himself believes he will survive. Therefore, the Torah says the disease will cause hopeless longing. Explained by Abba Rashi means that he will not recover. Although he himself does not believe that he will survive, nevertheless, others may believe that he will. If the Torah said, we give us nefesh. Explain what Ashi to the mean that the family members are afflicted with depression due to his death. You will sow your seed, will not grow. If this is the case, though, what would you, your enemies come to eat? At the verse just stated, and the enemies will eat it. It's not going to grow. What circumstance are we speaking here about? You will sow and seed, you'll sow your seed one particular year. And it will not grow. Then the following year, you have it, it will grow. But then your enemies will come and find Trojans for the time of their siege. Thus, the inside the siege cities will be dying of starvation because you're not gathered the produce from the previous year. Another explanation is you'll see your seed in vain is that your scripture here is alluding to the sons and daughters, not talking about food, talking about your children. Namely, that you will invest hard work in your children. Rearing them, punishment of your son will come to consume them. They will rebel against you. You're going to have rebellious children. Those who I have re reared and brought up, my enemies will consume. Just as he said regarding the good, I will turn towards you. So too with God and the bad. I will set my attention against you. I will say to you a parable of a king who said to his servants when they had not obeyed him, I will now turn my attention away from all my affairs and occupy myself with you and do you harm. Rough stuff. And you will be fooled by your enemies before your enemies. And the, the, the deathly plague will kill you from, from inside to siege cities. While your enemies surround you from the outside will rejoice that you're dying off within from the plague. 
I'll make your enemies stem from within your own people. By the time that the nations stand up against Israel, they seek out only what is visible. As it says, and as it happens when Israel sowed at Midian and Molech and the children of, of the east came up and they encamped against them and destroy the land and the produce. However, when I set up enemies against you from within, from your own camp, they will seek out your hidden treasures within. Thus the verse says, who ate the flesh of my people and flayed the skins upon them and opened their bones and broke them. The metaphor of breaking the bones to get to the marrow within, alluding to the enemy seeking the hidden treasure within, Ask them and you will run for fright. But no one is pursuing you for lack of strength left to pursue you. It's then the Gothic interpretation given to this Kainim. Rashi resumes this commentary. If you're not going to, if you're not going to, if, if during these you will not listen to me, I will add another seven punishments upon your sin. Rashi has said, and if you, and if, if even after all these seven punishments come upon you, you don't listen to me, I will add more suffering of a different nature. Sheva al-Khatasin. Seven attributions to your seven sins that were enumerated earlier. The right is going to Zechem. I'll break the pride of your strength. Satish Mechel Kabayz, I'll make you lift your skies like iron. Sats and Kanechesha, and like your lands like iron. Now she says, I well, what means I'll break the pride? This is the temple. Destroy the temple. So the scripture builds, I profane my sanctuary, pride of your strength. Satish I'll make your, your skies as iron. This is more severe than, than that of Meshavim. But there he says, the skies above will not be like copper, and the earth will need to be like iron. God says, the sky will be like iron that the sky will sweat as copper sweats, and the earth will not sweat, just as iron doesn't sweat. And therefore, the earth will preserve any of its existing fruit, because the sky will give off rain, but will only give us a sweat. God says, I'm going to turn the sky into metal, iron, and it will not even sweat, so you're not going to have even the rain for the sweat of the iron. So just as iron does not sweat, and therefore there will be, no, be drought in the world, while the earth will sweat, thus the cup is sweat, thus causing the fruits to rot. So God's, God's warning is worse than Meshla Bein as Techafas later on in Deuteronomy. Tam Lodikha, verse 20, with Tam Lodikha, Chacham, your strength will be expanded in vain. And the land will not give its produce. Eitz HaSol, Lizit Imperia, the trees of the earth will not give forth its fruits. When we see how God is happy with the Jewish people today, because the land of Israel is giving off an abundance amount of fruits. Tam the case of the man who did not toil, not having plowed, sown, and weeded, or cut off thorns or hood at the time of harvest. If, bright, if, if blight comes and ruins everything that others worked on, it's not affected at all. However, a man who did toil, plowed, sowed, weed, cut off the thorns, hood, and the bright comes, blight comes, and ruins everything, that's painful. If I didn't put effort in, you didn't put effort in, you didn't see any gain. A person that put effort in and worked hard and no gain, it's a very painful experience to that person. He's become plunt, meaning his spirit is surely broken. That's the force of retribution described here. Sitan Vula. And the land will not give off any produce, even in the quantity of seed that you bring forth. Meaning, why the expression the tree of the earth? It means that the trees will be smitten even on the, from the earth. They will not be able to put forth their fruits in a season when the fruits sprout forth. It means the production of fruits originates from the earth in which the tree is rooted. The tree will blossom, but the earth will have no power to bring forth its fruit. Layiting, the face comes from the tree of the land. And from the fruit that must be understood here, refer to both that the phrase, phrase which is before 
it and which comes after it, the tree and the fruits. And therefore, the two separate attributions specified here. Like eat the pia, if the tree pro pro will produce any fruit, they will drop off. Thus, because the tree of the land will not give off fruits, off forth its fruits, represent two separate curses. And by identifying them as two separate curses, it actually has shown in the verse 19 and 20, now enumerates seven retributions here. Namely, one, breaking the pride and strength, by Samidash, making the skies like iron, the land like copper, your strength to be expanded in vain, your land will not yield its produce, the trees will not be able to give forth its fruits. And number seven, the fruits of produce will drop off the tree. First time when you want to be careful, maybe Caddy, if you continue to continue to go with me in Caddy, Caddy is coldness, happiness. You're not going to listen to me. 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 Ah, she says, our rabbi says, the word means temporary, Caddy, Mikra, temporary. A chance, something that happens only sometimes. That's what verse means. If you treat the commandments as half happens, temporary concern. However, explain Kelly refraining similar to our steps. One who keeps back expression, explanation of Amy B. Kelly resembles Uncle as a name with denoting hardness. One who commits the sin hardens their heart to refrain from coming close to me. So I'll add another seven punishments. Number seven correspond to your sins. Verse 22, 22, one of the seven punishments. And I'll send the wild beast of the field against you. And it will be with you. And it says, And it will destroy your animals. And it will diminish you. And your roads become desolate. Now she says, uh, It's special and exciting. In this verse, I know that the wild beast will be bereave you. But this is, one of, this is the nature. I didn't know that domestic animals were not accustomed to kill people. Or kill. If the terrorists will incite the teeth of lice up against you. It's later in Deuteronomy. Thus, there are two punishments. Both wild beasts and domestic animals attacking people. How do we know they were killed through the bite? Because the verse continues in the venom of the creatures that slither in the dust. Thus, as those snakes kill through their bite. So also they'll kill regular animals, your cows will bite us and will die. Indeed, they were the years of the land of Israel when domestic donkeys used to bite and kill. Wild donkeys bite and kill. So all these things ultimately happened. Uh, Man Chaim writes that the, the wild donkey is basically a domestic animal, but also has a lek, lek and bahar comments. It lives in the wilderness. As they have consider a wild animal. These are the young children, or bite the young children. Basically, they them in outside the city. They meet us on the mission for in the city. Shaman and Chaytam, and major trails, minor trails. Here are the seven punishments teeth of domestic animals, the teeth of wild animals, the venom of crawling things in the dust. Number four, they will review, utterly destroy you. Six, and you diminish you. Number seven, your roles become desolate. Verse 23, does Vasuli. And if the, all these things are, you're not going to still be, you'll still not be chastised. But after me, Kelly will continue to go to me against me in Kelly. One means like to Vasu means to come back. And I'll continue to keep, to go with you also in coldness or in the half happiness. Casey asked me, I will hit you again, Sheva Chata, seven times. Verse 25, basically, I'm head of the chemist and comes with I'll bring upon an army, avenging the avenging of the covenant. Nasa Rechem, and you'll gather in your cities, which left the devil, Sechman, and entice a plague in your midst. And Zaz Sadi Avechem, I'll deliver you in the hand of the enemy. Now she says, since there's an avenging which is not of the covenant, meaning it's not saying the title, such as those in the manner of avenging. That is, that is blinding of the eyes. Yo, blinding is not one of the punishments enumerated here. Not explanation of avenging covenant. Avenging here is because of the, your broke your covenant. Namely, whenever the expression is cheder, being a cheder appears in scripture, it refers to the war of the of enemies' armies. 
the stuff them in the chutz, they'll take it, they'll come from the outside. Your enemies will come from the outside and they'll come inside to the inside of your cities due to the siege. Hatam Deber, through this plague, you'll be delivered over to the hands of your enemies who besiege you. Because since you one may not allow a dead person to remain unburied overnight in Jerusalem, when you bring out their dead to burial, the, the enemies will come into the city, the city of Jerusalem. Verse 26. When I break you with a staff of bread, and ten women will bake your bread in one oven. And you'll bring back your bread by weight. You'll eat. But you'll not be satisfied. As she says, Mata staff of bread, Mata expression denotes the source of, of bread. Mata lecha means I'll break every support of bread that you have. This refers to the arrows of hunger, where both the expression appears. The doc identifies the arrows of hunger as bright mildew and loc locusts, which destroys some of the most, or destroys some most of the grain. And ten women will bake in one in one in one oven is because of lack of wood. You'll all have to you'll all have to get together to break because not enough wood in the city. And when she receive a and mishkal, the the grain will rot, and the bread will come crumbling, breaking apart inside the oven. The woman therefore will sit and weigh the broken pieces to divide them amongst themselves, and you'll eat it and not be happy. Curse. Described curses within the intestines. Once again, the seven retribution enumerated in verse 25 and 26 confront to the seven sins, namely the attacking of enemies, siege, plague, destruction of food flies, lack of wood, crumbly bread, curse of intenses, the claws that were delivered into an enemy hand does not account separate and retribution is part of the attacking enemies. Verse 27, Jesus if you're still going to go against you, you'll still go with me in a coldness. I'll go with you with a fruit. I'll be fruity. After all this, I'll go another 10 times. You'll eat the flesh of your sons. The flesh of your daughters. The hail you'll eat out of hunger. And I'll demolish your edifices. Cut down your idols. The Satis prefigures them up with your corpse. I'll figure your life on the corpse of your idols. The Egil and Nafshi Aslam, my spirit will reject you. As she says, in Mesechem, Magdalen, Bidin, the towers and castles. I mean, Echem, is there any types of idols placed upon the rooftops since they stand up like, to the sun? Satis prefigures them. I'll make your corpse fall upon the corpse of your idols. How so? People would be swollen for starvation. And the fruit get gesture of homage, they will take out their idols from the bosom and kiss it. And their bellies would burst open. They would fall down dead on top of it. The girl and now she asked them, I'll despise you, I'll take my shechina away from you. Verse 31. I'll lay your cities in waste. And your holy place will be desolate. I'll not try to take you. Pleasant fragrances. Now she says that this thing, that I might think that this means desolate of people residing there. The next verse says, I will make the land desolate. Desolation of people who reside there is already stated. What does it mean in waste? It means that the land will be desolate of any and of any past buyers. They become a desolate land itself. She makes this this means the sheikh. I will. Make your holy place desolate. I might, I might think that this is, means desolate of sacrifice. However, the scripture says, I'm not taking your pleasant fragrances. The lesson of sacrifice is stated. What is the meaning? I'll make your holy place desolate. It means desolate of throngs. There are car, caravans of Israelites who, who prepared themselves and gathered to go there, the Holy Temple of Jerusalem. There are also seven attributes. Are in mentioned because of seven sins, namely eating flesh of your eating flesh of your sons and daughters, and if it's being demolished, thus have two retribution numerated. The cutting down of the son idols is not counted as a separate retribution, rather as part of the second one. 
or as a consequence of the edifice being demolished, the sun idols had been erected on the rooftops will be demolished and fall off, destroyed. I'll make your corpse fall upon the corpse of your idols. That's the next one. That makes three. The departure of the divine presence. Four, the city is being laid to waste. The isolation of the holy places from throngs. And I, would, and I will partake of the pleasant fragrance of your sacrifice. Total seven. Even though the assuming verse goes on to mention several additional hardships that are not actually part of these seven. But that Israel have to endure if they sin. I'll make the land desolate with and it'll become desolate also on your enemies that live on it. The Rashi says this is a bracha. Because when the, when the nations of the world destroyed that soul, they didn't inhabit it, they left too. Destroyed the land and they left it desolate. Zoom me the table. So this is actually a good thing for Israel. That since the land we desolate from people, so not imagine if that soul was, was populated, if the Romans populated the land. Now you'll have a hard time coming back to the land when the land is already totally populated. But the Abish they made it the land, nobody had an interest in the land. That's what happened in history. Nobody had an interest in the land until the Jews came. <laughs> After 2,000 years, the Jews came back down. Suddenly, everybody wants the land. But for 1,000 years, the, the land like desolate. It was like a, there wasn't a tree in the land. And that's a bracha. That's a bracha. The Abish says, don't worry. It'll be desolate. Land's going to be desolate for everybody. Nobody's going to want to take this land and turn it into anything. That's a bracha. The that the, that the, the enemies not find content in the land. So the enemies will come, they'll destroy the land, and they will not be able to inhabit the land. So they won't find any great. If they would have been able to take the land and make it beautiful, they would have taken over the land. But they didn't because they couldn't, they couldn't use the land either. So they, no, they destroyed the land, and they left the land. And what happens? As it has come back going, that's what happened. The Jewish people of the destruction of the temple. I'll scatter you amongst the nations. And you will unsheath the Lord after. Your land, there it shall be desolate, and your sins will be laid waste. Now she says, scattering them among the nations, this though is a harsh thing for Jews, that they were scattered amongst the nations. When people in the country are exiled and to the same place, they see each other and find solace. Here, the Jewish people can separate themselves. However, it was scattered through the wind, like a, like a, through a window of a basket that was thrown around the world. That's what happened. That's what the person who scatters Billy uh, through a sea. We didn't see each other. And that's what ultimately came about the you know, different ways of life by Jews because they were scattered around the world. In those days, you had no connection. One, play, one Jew and then another connection with another Jew. By Pesi means I'll empty out. That means uh, here I can unsheath because the unsheath the sword, the chef is empty. So they will say, empty out the land. The land will be empty. You'll be scattered around the world and that soul will be empty. And we'll always have Jews, but it'll be empty. That's a good nation. That's what we see today. Majority of Jews in the world today live in that soul. It's unbelievable. Since the destruction of the temple, you see the concept that uh, you know, Mashiach is on his way, that the majority of the Yidna, over six million Jews, live in it. So it's like a person empty, demonic, but as long as uh, for thousands of years it was empty. Why is that? It's but you will not hasten to return to it. Subsequently, your cities will be waste. It will appear to you as having been permanently to waste. That's what's happening. Man, Jews, thousand years, couldn't even imagine going back to it. So they put it in their prayers and uh, they prayed for going back to Ed Stoll. Every benching, every davening, we always prayed about going back to Ed Stoll, but nobody could imagine they would actually go back to Ed Stoll. Such a far distant thing to them. When a person is exiled from his house, from his vineyard, from the city, but he knows that he will ultimately return in his eyes, it's a through the vineyard and the house is not laid to waste. But here, since the land will give up its hope, returning to its land for thousands of years, we gave up hope. And I just saw, I mean, we didn't give up hope. But we know Jews, you tell a Jew 200 years ago, you're going back to it still, they will look at you as crazy. They will look to the ultimate, even though they had this yearning and this desire, but they couldn't imagine 
So they will actually go back to Eretz Yisrael. Verse thirty-four states, "Our Hashem said, but then the land will appease regarding its sad battle. Then we rest. Oh, you may have Shamama all the days of it remains desolate. Atim brothers of Yechem, you'll be in your land of your enemies. Us Tishpas are then the land will rest. Will be desolate because nobody's going to work on the land. Not Jews, not non-Jews. The land will lay rest. It is Hashem will appease its battle for years." The verb is reflective form that the land will be appeased and turned to appease God, anger of God. Yitzhak Melech, as you said, the verb is a cause of meaning. The land will appease the king regarding its paracleas. Verse 35, all the, the resting, it will rest on the days of his remains desolate. Because you did not rest. You did not give the land to rest. When you lived there, you didn't give the land to rest. So, I, so now I'm going to give the land its rest. So now she says, this is the 70 years, the long Rashi, we had, this is the 70 years of Babylon in exile between the destruction of the first temple and the rebuilding of the second temple, responding to the 70 years of the Sabbath, Shemitah and Jubilee that took place during the years that Israel angered God, the land, three, 430 years. It took 430 years for the destruction of the temple to happen. So they were on the land for 430 years. 390 years were the years of their sinning. So when they entered the land of Israel, 10 tribes were exiled. The people of Judah and they angered him for 40 more years by the time the 10 tribes were exiled until the destruction of Jerusalem. This is what I refer to. Uh, God makes Ezekiel figure to suffer one day for each year Israel sinned in order to atone their sins. And you shall lie on the left side, symbolize the house of Israel, the 10 tribes. Now, I've made for you the years and the inquiry by the number of days, 379 and 300, 390 days, you shall bear the iniquity of the house of Israel. When you complete these, you shall lie in your right side a second time, and you shall bear the iniquity of the house of Judah 40 days, a day for a year, a day for a year, I've given to you. And this is the prophet stated in Ezekiel, the fifth year of the king of, of Jehoshaphat's Jeho, exile, Jehoshaphat's exile, and since people of Judah spent another six years in the land until Zedekiah exile, totaling 46 sinful years of the house of Judah. And hence, the 850 years the people of Israel spent for the time of their entry into the land until eventually the exile. So, I'm sorry, so 860 years, 850 years from the time they came until. And this temple destroyed. And after the destruction of the first temple, they sinned a total of 436 years. And you might object, saying that the king Anasha, who was born immediately after the 10 tribes were exiled, who ruled for 54 or five, five years. So even with taking into account the simple years during the reign of all the other kings of Judah, 55 years alone is more than 46. So surely the calculation is incorrect. However, Manasseh repented his evil ways for 33 of the 55 years of his reign. Thus, his sinful years amounted to 22 years. As written, he made uh, Sheda as Ahab, the king of Israel, had made, and Ahab ruled 22 sinful years. So Manasseh sinful 22 of his 50 year reign is taught in Agada. Uh, God has a, like an 11 chapter of tracted of Sanhedrin. Thus, the number of years the house of Judah's sin is 22 years in the reign of Anash, two during the reign of Ammon, 11 during the reign of, Z of uh, Jehokim, and the same, another 11 in the reign of Z Z Zedekiah, only 46 years. Other kings of Judah are not included in the calculation. Because during the, during the righteous Yeshaya reign, Israel did not sin. Yechav uh, and Zechariah each ruled only for three months. Let us now go back to the calculation for the period of 436 years of sin. How many Shemitahs and Jubilee years transpired during those years? The reign of 16. Every 100 years, 14 Shemitah years, two Jubilee years totaling 16 sabbatical years. Therefore, 
400 years, we have 64. The remaining 36 years, we have five. Cycle of seven years plus five, Schmidt years. Make a total of 64 uh, and five. 70 minus one, 69 unobserved sabbatical years, the total of 436 years of the period. Must, and, and, and we must add the calculation in the next year. This next year was the last simple year of the 436 year, which began another Shemitah cycle. God exiled Israel and did not wait to complete the cycle, but then to desecrate the seventh year of Shemitah. And of mercy to them. They would not have to endure punishment, not a destruction. This extra year, nevertheless, is included in the calculation here, as though another sabbatical had gone and observed, thereby completing 70. That's why the Jewish people were 70 years out of Eretz Israel. 70 was the cycle of the 70 sabbatical years. And the jubilee is that it didn't do Eretz Israel. So that's how we come to the calculation. I don't know how we come to a calculation now of over 2,000 years, but uh, <laughs> so when that, the punishment, uh, so really that's why the Gemara says that the punishment that we're next on now is because sinas chinam, because the hatred. And then it was because of the sabbatical years, now it's because the hatred between one Jew and another Jew. Verse 37, let's go to 36. Man. The Shalom Bechem Find those who survive or bring fear in the hearts and the lands of their enemies. And the sound of rustling leaf will pursue them. And they will flee the sword. And they will form. There's nobody who pursues them. As she says, it means in the land of your enemies, you'll be running around, you'll be moving from place to place. What happened? The murderers who are pursuing them, but there's no pursuer. All they need off the push leaf, the wind pushes, striking against another leaf. So it knocks and makes a noise. The tagging or tail taught of shut up an expression of striking. So we'll be afraid of, we're going to be afraid of things that are not even happening. So you'll, hear a, you'll hear a rustle of the wind and you'll say, oh, well, we're going to be chased. Well, you know, that's, uh, that's how much fear will be afraid. Verse 37, And each man will stumble over his brother, fleeing as if from a sword. But nobody's pursuing you. An imaginary pursuer. You'll not be able to stand before your enemies. As she said, when you run to flee, you'll stumble in each other because they're fleeing in panic. If they're fed up, as fleeing from people want to kill you. They will, they will have fear in their hearts. At every moment, they will think that somebody's chasing them. That's the problem. We fear that. Oh, today we fear. We have, we're always afraid of everything. Each man will stumble because of his brother, meaning one person will stumble because someone else has else sinned. All Jews are guarantors one another. And then you'll be you're lost amongst the nation, and they'll eat you. And the land of enemies will consume you. At the beginning, you'll be scattered amongst the nations. That means that you'll die there. You'll, you'll die in the, in the Asp, you'll die in Gullus. Shandran Machem left those you, your, your Kumu, will, the leftovers, children, survivals, not run away in the land of your enemies. They will, because the iniquities of the fathers are still within them. Ashes, if the old, if they hold on to the Evil practice of forefathers in their hands. Your muku is an expression of melting. Verse 40 is bad as Avedon, but ultimately they'll confess their iniquities. As Avedon, very very some of the iniquities of their fathers. The mala mashamalu be the betrayal that betrayed me. Afani ahochi mevikeri, and that they also treated me in half in a difference. Afani ahochi mevikeri. I will too treat you in half happiness. I'll bring them back while in the land of their enemies. Then their clogged hearts become humbled. I'll gain appeasement of their nick. And Ash says, over here, over here, the Torah is positive. 
I myself will bring them back. This is a second thing for Israel, good thing for Israel, that they should not say, since we have been exiled amongst the nations, we may be as well been killed by them. Says God, the answer is, I will not allow them to do this. Rather, I will set up my prophets and bring them back to me under my wings. Don't worry, I will protect you. The saints, but what enters their mind shall not come about. But I, you say, let me like the nations, like the families of the land serving the wooden stones. As I live for the Lord your God, surely be with a strong hand, with an outstretched arm, and with a pure, poured out fury, I will re re get reign over you. Don't worry. Don't say, you know what? Let's become like the nations. Since we're, we're scattered amongst the nations, let's become like the nations. That she says, Ajifana, this is not an expression. Oh, yeah, oh, similar to the verse. And if it is known, that's the meaning of the verse is if they want to become like the nations, I will have to take them back to me against their will. Or as it clogged the hearts, is becoming humble. But as Yitzhak Marian, as she said, then they will gain atonement for their iniquities through their suffering. I just busy, I gave, I remember the covenant of Isaac, Jacob. I I remember the covenant of Isaac. I remember the covenant of, of Abraham. Or it's Esker, I remember the land. Over here, Rashi Yaakov, the word Yaakov is spelled out total. The word Yaakov, the name Yaakov is written full, but above Yaakov. By placing the Tata, the name Elio is written defective, without a vav. Aleph, Lama, Yud, Hey. Five places, Jacob is, is uh, took a letter of vav from the name of Elio, the prophet, as a security. So Yaakov over here takes Elio's name. I have to know the whole Tanakh to be able to say this. So uh, Yaakov is written five times with extra, and five times Elio is written without a vav. Over here, Yaakov takes Elio, because Yo is going to bring Mashiach. He's going to announce the coming of Mashiach. Yaakov takes the, the vav and Elio to make sure that Elio comes, <laughs> uh, that Elio will not forget the Jewish people. And the submission of Yo's name will remain incomplete. So Yaakov says, you're, you're not complete. Your job is not complete until you bring Mashiach. So it fulfills it speedily in our days. The five instances of love symbolize the five fingers of the hand, meaning that this security arrangement between Jacob and Leo was sealed with a handshake. The Yaakov and Leo made a commitment that they would not ever give up to bring Mashiach to the Jewish nation. Haiti as Bis Yaakov. Why the forefather enumerated reverse order? Inform you that the youngest patriarch Yaakov is alone worthy for his for this, that the Israel to redeem in the merit of Yaakov alone. And why is expression remembering not used by Isaac? Perhaps it's busy Yitzhak, it doesn't say Esker. It doesn't say Esker. It says Esker by Yaakov, remember by Yaakov. It doesn't say Esker. It says Esker by Avram. It says Esker by Yitzhak. So, but this is not Yaakov, is he, um, sorry. Uh, but if the that Isaac is together with him um, and it's not enough, then Abraham's with him. Why is the expression remember not mentioned by Isaac? Because Isaac ashes always appear before me, gathered up in the place of the altar. And therefore, God does not need to remember Isaac. Akedas Yitzhak la'ilam tiska. The Akedah of Yitzhak, God doesn't have to have, be reminded. The land will be bereft. Kitsa Shapsha said, and the battle has been desolated from them. Shamamahem, and there will be gain appeasement of their iniquities. This old retribution having despised my ordinance. And it's a retribution for their rejecting my statutes. That's just Gemul, Gemule Ashashatim Bas. This is a retribution like Mita connected with. And they wish to make another promise. Afghans, they spend it to them in Eden. But despite all this, even when they're in the lands of their enemies, I'm not despised and I'm not, I will never reject the Chalaisim to annihilate the Jewish people. I will never break my covenant. 
I will always, they'll always be the Jewish nation. Because I am God, they're God, even after all these things that are going to befall them, they will stay in existence. The last is moreover, even though I meet out these retributions upon which I have described for them, when they are in the land of their enemies, nevertheless, I will not despise them to annihilate them. Here, by breaking my covenant with them, it will never happen. The fact that I the shame, I'll always remember the covenant that I made with them. I took them out of the land of Egypt. They now go in front of the eyes of the nation. So I made a covenant not only with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I made a covenant with the tribes. These are the statutes and the ordinance. I should not Hashem which God gave me no baby in his soul to him in the Jewish nation, but I see that in the Mount of Sinai be admission and admission. I say, why the plural Tedes? This comes to the name, both Tedes the written law, and Tedes the oral law, which was all given on Sunday. We have completed a homish of the day. Long reading. We now go to the Tanya of the day, only in chapter 49 of the Tanya. The Rebbe explains a beautiful thing yesterday in the blessings, in the blessings before the Shema, and why these specific blessings were instituted by the sages and then why they are called the blessings of the Shema. Because these two blessings prepare us for the Shema. Shema is Kabbalah Selmach Shemaim. Shema is the concept of my total love of God. And what means my total love of God means that when I say the Shema, at least, I am totally concentrating on God. And that's why I say, when I'm saying the Shema, at least, I say, I love you with all my heart, both my godly soul, my animistic soul, and you my priority, even over anything in this world, even over my wife and children. Right now, you're my priority. And not only that, I'm ready to give my life up to you. And not only that, nothing in the world, behold, my death, nothing in this world is valuable to me in comparison to right now where I am totally given over to HaKadosh Baruch. So that's why we say the two blessings. The blessings of how the angels are praising God and the blessings of God love to the Jewish nation. That God's love to the Jewish nation, we just read the tale, is non breakable. And He loves us an unlimited love. And He put aside everything in the world, all, and He created everything in the world. And everything in the world was created for this love. So this creates a love between me and God. If God loves me. And I feel that. And I realize that His love to me, then surely I love God. That's the doubt that continues. She also asked, Ela Dvarom to the a thinking person will reflect on these matters in the depths of his heart and brain. As I am a mela, if, he truly, if I truly contemplate, meditate, and I understand it, truly comprehend it, at least in my mind, mela, that if you cannot awaken up a heart to God, then you're not thinking right. Then you're not thinking of this right. Because the mind rules the heart as we learned many times during the time, the mind rules the heart. And therefore, if the mind is doing its, its process, if the mind is processing the thing correctly, then it has to be Abba. Because the mind rules the heart. As a mirror, as, it's as if water faces the face, mirrors the face. It's Right? So you look in the mirror and you see a face. That's the way it is. Because that's the way God created it. That a mirror or water reflects you, reflects the person's face. Can live all the other. So too, if I express a heartful thing to another person, it's going to affect his heart because heart reflects the heart. So too, if I reflect God, if I look and I I have a love, I, I understand something, the love of God to me, and how God puts aside all everything in, in creation for me, then the slight nafshe. His soul will spontaneously be kindled with the love of God. The slave is Yeruch the Diva, and who clothes itself with Snail and Nihlazim, Scholarship Labor Negative, who clothes itself 
in a spirit of benevolence, willingly to lay down, absolutely abandon all his possessions. If I can, if I have meditation and I understand how God loves me, I will love God. And I will drop everything. For there will no longer an importance to him. Because at this present moment, again, we're not like Avram Avinu can do this 24-7, but at least when I dive in, when I pray to God, and I come to Shema, I can do this. In the concept of kissing and in the attachment of spirit to spirit, as explained above. So just as kissing involved not only leaving of mouth, but also communion of breath, so too does a spiritual unity involve the union of man's spirit to God. Man's spirit becomes one with God. And that would happen if I have, that's why we mentioned the Taylor, you cannot come to the concept of the most God if you don't know, if you don't have meditation of the mind, if you don't have the concept of understanding. How does attachment of spirit to spirit mean what measure are to be taken if one seeks the desire to only cleave? To this end is stated soon in the phrase, and your heart, with all your heart, soon after the phrase, with all your heart, and so on, and these words shall be upon your heart. Speaking it. That's learning Taylor. The divide is the midst of learning Taylor. As soon as we explain this, we first immerse yourself in the study of Taylor. That's what the Taylor, that, so the shikin is a mitzvah. That's kissing, that's Ava. The shikin, we kiss the God, kiss, we kiss God. We love him. And not only we kiss physically, we kiss with breath to breath. But a Jew wants to have the mingling of spirit to spirit. So therefore, we go to the second parasha. Or, and I'm sorry, the first parasha. Learn Taylor. Learn Taylor. Which comes from Yitzchayim. As brought down in Yitzchayim. The Yichon and Shikin, the kissing, which incorporates the union, attachment of spirit to spirit, is Yichud Chachma Bina Das B'Chachma Bin Das. Is the connection of wisdom to wisdom, learning Taylor, wisdom to wisdom, wisdom, my wisdom to the wisdom of God, the union of man's chachmamina with God's chachmamina. That is concentration of Taylor, limit of Taylor, not only limit but even to concentrate on what I learned, which in, unites man's chabad, my intellect with God's chabad. So now you have the mingling of spirit to spirit. And then you use your mouth. Then you use your mouth. Then you got to bring it out openly. Say it. Not only have understanding in your mind, on your heart, I say it. Again. Three clothes, the three garments of the soul. Machshava, Dibra, Maisa. Machshava is even understanding it. Dibra is saying it. You need to say it. That's you saying the Shema. You shall speak it. That is speech. That's the, that's the garment of speech. It's read the God of speech and gave the word of Taylor. By speaking the word of Taylor as it's written, you shall speak in that. The spirit emerges into a revealed state. Thus, the union of spirit with spirit is mainly brought about in one's immersion of Taylor's study. And the reason it follows, the verse said, the verse says, the word that proceeds from mouth, God's mouth does man live. A mouth is thus the outlet of breath. However, since the, that it's crucial, is understanding Taylor, but through the union of spirit to spirit of understanding, which is in your mind, is affected. Why must the one utter the words of Taylor arrive to this love? Al-Tanabba now addressed himself 
to this question and says, why would you choose that for man himself? Meaning, his divine soul, pleading to God is attained through chiefly through understanding of Taita, through his brain. So why doesn't he say it? This only suffices for his divine soul. In order for the divine soul's plan to be realized, meaning that godliness to be drawn down upon the animal soul as well, in this world as a whole, that's why you need to speak. This is because physical worlds are uttered by the animal soul, as we've looked before. I only can speak because I have an animal soul. My neshama can learn Taita. It learns Taita in this world, and it learns Taita in the world, in the world to come. In my animal soul is what speaks. That's my physical body through the four, the five articulations of the mouth. And through my breath, I speak. That means I need to have my physical body to speak. That's my physical body is my animal soul. That's the way I get involved in my animal soul. Imagine if my body would only speak words of Taylor. You imagine if I impress myself to only say the words, my body would not have any time to do any sins because we're learning Taylor. The like Mishnah says, if a person would work and learn Taylor, he would never have places to do a sin. We're finding too much time on our hands. The person would learn Taita and go to work. And whenever he had a moment in his work to learn Taita, then he wouldn't have time to do a beta. Not even have time to do a sin. He's tired. You have no kaya. Because we're finding too much time. We have too much time. We, we, we're learning Taita. We're working. And we're still finding time to, 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 to sin. Why? The second you start working, go learn. Because again, why, why, why is it easy to sin? Because we're only using our brain for Taylor. Mouth, we're using for everything else. No. Use your mouth for Taylor too. That's it. Learn Taylor. Learn Taylor in your mouth because that's the way your animal soul is going to be busy. If you're not going to say the words of Taylor, your animal soul is not busy again. And that's where Yannis soul gets, uh, gets, gets bored. He's not being used. Starts to push you to other things. But if I would sit and learn Taylor and all the empty times I had by saying the words of Taylor through my animal soul, which is my body and my mouth, I'll be busy. Understandable, this self-same reason applies not only to speaking words of Taylor, but also explains why mistress are performed with the physical body and utilize objects from the material world, for it is through them that God is manifest to the animal soul and material world as a whole. So it's not a divitator. It's concerning the mitzvah. So I should be busy, in essence, when I know I'm not working. I should be busy in learning, davening, doing mitzvahs, and that's it. Here, however, the matter under discussion is tailor knowledge. In this instance, although nothing can ignite the divine soul with a source more complete than contemplation of Torah, nevertheless necessary. That's why we do Dal Rebbe, even though this, this, this concept is also mitzvah, Dal Rebbe wants to give you a better example. And you have the concept of Torah which unites soul with God in the most greatest way through the mind. So therefore, maybe Torah should be exclusively for the mind. No. Comes the boss that can tell us to be to bump. And even Taylor should be used with the mouth. Even Taylor should be expressed with the, with the animal soul. So now Taylor, the learning of Taylor can accomplish two things at one time. It connects the soul to the greatest connection with God through learning of Taylor, and it connects the body at the same moment. If I say the words of Taylor with my mouth, is not that in other ways of Taylor as well and to draw godliness in, one, in one's animal soul. And indeed, not only your animal soul, but the whole world, because the Taylor refines the world. So therefore, the Altar Rebbe is become Maki Yati De Chavas in Allah tells you you haven't fulfilled the obligation of Limit Taylor, the Eel, the Hid of the You know, you don't accomplish, you don't do the mitzvah. You don't complete the mitzvah. You didn't have done you didn't have done your obligation. That's why ultimately it comes in Allah. 
So one's obligation is not fulfilled thereby, by learning to in your mind. You might connect your soul to the highest places, but you haven't done the obligation what God wrote about the revelation of the Taylor to the world. But you should learn it. Even the something of the leads to the lofty union of his soul with God in a manner of cleaving spirit to spirit. Until you express it with your lips. The purpose is ultimately to bring the Taylor down to the world. Until your animal, uh, your, your, until your, your, your vivifying soul, which dwells in the blood of man, which is pro the produce that is life, blood, comes about from vegetable, mineral, and the animals of the world. That, is, that gives your blood its existence. And now you're learning to eat with it by using your physical body, by exterminating your body. I don't exterminate your mind, you're exterminating your body. I was saying the words of Taylor, etc. So that's to say, eating and drinking produce the blood, which is very fine soul's clothes, and godliness is drawn down into all the above the wills when one speaks the words of Taylor. Why? Because you want to elevate everything. The Lahal is to the elevates them all. Be a fine soul, the minerals, the vegetables, the animal world. You're bringing them all, you're uniting them all, you're elevating the world. With your existence came to food. So you're not only elevating your body, you're elevating all the tomatoes and all the potatoes and all the vegetables and all the meat that you have eaten. You're elevating all the animal in the whole world. And ultimately, which will illuminate the world and all its inhabitants in a revealed manner. The spirit of the verse says, that ultimately will elevate this whole world. As it says, and the flesh shall see it. Well, we're going to elevate to it. If we'll only do trade in our mind, you'll have the elevation of your godly soul. But if you do turn to the path, if you say, you are not, use, your, 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 use your physical life to say the words of Taylor, it takes your exertion, takes your it takes time. It elevates everything that you have done, everything that you have eaten. So now you have elevated the world, which brings about that ultimately that the flesh, and that's the promise that God promises, the Mashiach comes, but not only the godly soul will see God, but the basar, physical, will see God. Is that Tachas Ashtal Shuskalem? Because that's the whole purpose. That was the whole purpose of the creation of the world. But this is the purpose of progressive descent of all the worlds that we start, we said in the birth of Krishna. That's no purpose that the glory of God may pervade this physical world. That the world should see God. Not that the God should see God, that my Nisham should see God, the world should see God. The Bosa, the flesh. That this, this world should become revealed. The transformation of darkness into light. Meninalness, the bitterness into sweetness. In this Galel, as I mentioned before, that this is the purpose of man. This is the essence, the intent of man's service. To draw down the light of God here in this world. Therefore, although spiritual service and deep understanding of Torah are able through thought alone to fulfill the objective of this love, to cleave to God in a manner of cleaving spirit to spirit, that's wonderful. An intent of a service should not only be the sacred divine soul, it also needs to be keeping God's desire. <laughs> it's not only about me. It's not even about my divine soul. It's about God's desire and creation. Drawing down God in the material world, that's the God's desire in creation. And this is accomplished only through speaking to him. Before commanding, now before commanding us to place these words of Taylor on our hearts and continue by saying, you shall speak of them. Taylor says, and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. That's how the Pasuk starts. That's how the first chapter starts. With all your might. For before Godliness is drawn down through Taylor, Man must first initiate an arousal of love on his part. 
Only then will godliness be drawn down through Teda and mitzvahs. This is what Alter Rebbe says. So first we need to have our arousal from below. We want God to come down to the world. That we call a slusa de la tata, an awakening from below, which creates an awakening from above. And that's what's called Maya Nukvim. In Kabbalah, it's called arousal from below, is the feminine waters, which wakes, awakens up Maya Nukvim, Kabbalistic words. Let's just find the simple uh, meaning of those words, masculine waters, which come up come from above. So we're Knesset Yisrael, we are the Jewish nation, we are feminine, and we are the feminine waters, we awaken up the feminine waters, we bring down, bring down godly waters to our existence. That's the Kabbalah, actually, it's not my Dukhin, we must initiate masculinization of my Dukhin, the female waters, in Kabbalah, terminology is given by the razzle of female, of the recipient, we are the recipient, world is the recipient, we are the vessel for this light. God created us as a vessel for this light. So we are the recipient. We need to awaken up within ourselves to become a vessel. So the light can come in. If God does to give the life and above without us creating the initial creation of the cave, then the light will be too great for the vessel. So the Abishta wants the person should have his avoidance. He should awaken up himself for this light. And according to his awakening, that will be the revelation of the light. Ultimately, surrendering himself, and that's why the more we can surrender, the more we can do, the more we can have a total commitment and focus and, 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 and a primary, that, that, that's, that's more, the more we'll have that primary existence. So really, it's up to each and every one of us. In order for Godness to properly join down through Taylor Mitzvah, the first necessary that there be elevation of mind looks at emanating from man's love to God, the degree that he's ready to forego everything for that sake. What are you ready for? That's what you receive. That's Midak and Neged Midak. What you're ready for, that's what you receive. The way you prepare yourself, that's what you get. This down to Rebbe concludes the theme beginning from chapter 46. Regarding love likeness to the water mirroring the image of face. That's the way it is. So the way I show God, God will show me. Saying which is said, the Shema as an introductory blessing are especially effective in awakening it. I am not going to do this commentary. It's a long one. We get to hear how to that ends. And uh, in this chapter 49. And uh, we can leave this entire commentary for another time, but we're going to finish this. Uh, the Alter Rebbe ends the Tanya of today. Today is the 20th day of the month, which starts on chapter 97, and it goes to chapter 103. And if you do those seven chapters, accomplish it us today. Wish you all a wonderful day. I invite you all at 10 a.m. around the corner. I invite you all at 10 a.m. when we will learn the Sikh of the Rebbe on the portion of the week. You can come either to Chabad or you can come on Zoom or on Tor Direct and you can participate in the learning of a Sikh of a, a, a beautiful interpretation, teaching of the Rebbe on the Pasha. Have a wonderful day. Mishnah, I'll see you all tomorrow at 10 a.m. At 8 a.m., we'll continue the Chitas of the